Hi everybody, Eddie Vegas here. Um, I'm going to make a video that explains to new players how to begin and continue on a game of pre-warp in Distant Worlds Universe. I have been hanging out on the Steam forums quite a bit and I have noticed there's a lot of new players that say that this game is incredibly deep and intimidating. And I agree with them 100%. This game is deep and can be intimidating. So the only reason why I'm making a video of Distant Worlds Universe where I explain how to get off to a good start in pre-warp is that I've watched some of the other videos and the other videos that I've watched that are kind of tutorial videos, first of all, they have two things wrong with them. Well, not wrong with them because they're both, they're all very good, but they start from the viewpoint of somebody who really, really, really knows the game really well and a lot of times will not, um, will perhaps maybe over explain the things that don't necessarily need to be explained like I'm doing right now, to tell you the truth. Uh, and the other thing is, is that they waste a lot of time going through a lot of things. So my goal here, and I know that I'm wasting a lot of time, but I don't care. My goal here is to try to get in and get out as quickly as possible so that you can watch something that is a reasonable length of time, be able to turn off the videos, fire up Distant Worlds, and begin to enjoy a game of pre-warp, where you start in pre-warp, and start to generally know what you might need to be doing. So without a doubt, this is part one. Without a doubt. Uh, without further ado, this is part one. <laughs> and... Uh, we are going to go through the procedure of starting a new game. So let's go ahead and start a new game. Uh, we will just go directly to custom game as standard empire. And I'm going to explain basically the settings as we go through each and every one of the, the buttons. Okay. Here are all the different uh, shapes and sizes of your universe. I guess it really doesn't matter, to tell you the truth. What I really, I think, is most important for new players is that I don't think they really want to see, like, a lot of stars. And uh, seeing something that's, like, 1,400 stars. Uh, actually, well, I won't even go to 1,400 stars. I guess my computer's not good enough. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and start with tiny 250 stars, and we'll start with a small sector so we don't get too confused uh expansion should be set to pre-warp because we're this that's the point of this whole tutorial is to explain what to do in pre-warp aggression you can if you're just a beginner go ahead and put it on peaceful maybe they don't want to necessarily uh fight war at all times i'm going to go ahead and leave it on normal uh same thing with difficulty if you're just starting out put it on easy why not uh, I would uncheck this difficulty scales as player nears victory because, well, whatever. Once you've got to victory, you just want to basically win the game. Uh, let's go ahead and put the research costs at normal. Although, I will explain one thing. is By putting the research cost to expensive, you will vastly slow down the game. And this may actually be an interesting thing to do for new players is to put it on expensive and let your techs dribble in little by little and upgrade your ships little by little. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it on normal for now. Space creatures, you can put it as a new player. You can put it to none. Really, maybe you just don't want to mess with it. I'm going to go ahead and leave it to few. Uh, we get down to the pirates. Now, the pirates, I seriously suggest that you put uh, pirates on few and weak. Uh, pirates will definitely mess you up in the beginning of the game. As a matter of fact, I've seen a lot of posts, well, a few posts on the Steam forums where they say, well, I started the game in pre-warp and pirates came by and they destroyed me within 15 minutes, which is interesting. 
but maybe we don't necessarily want to go that way. You can, I do not suggest putting pirates to none because pirates can be useful and we may see the reason why a little bit later. And pirate strength weak, that will give you maybe a fighting chance as a new player. Uh, I like to check destroyed pirates do not respawn because once I've killed them, I would definitely want them to die. Uh, pirate proximity is okay. You can put it to average, although you can put it to distant too, which will give you even more breathing space for your fledgling colony. And that pretty much covers this. This is all like choice or whatever. Although I will say this, the ring uh, configuration is interesting because you can set your starting position a little bit later to be in the ring. And this kind of makes some natural borders to your empire. You will have to the left and right, you'll have ex room to expand. But at the same time, you'll be able to reasonably defend your borders because there's only a few stars in here. And, uh, and uh, this will probably, these guys in the middle here, you may want to be seeing them a little bit later in the game. But here, this makes a natural border, so I kind of like that. That pretty much covers it. Let's go to colonization and, and uh, territory. I personally leave it on normal colony prevalence normal there's only a normal amount of colonies that you can colonize and independent alien life i put it on normal uh, i set this to what they suggest 100 and colonization range this is basically a uh, how far away from your nearest planet you can colonize so i'm just going to leave this at the default although you can kind of mess with this uh, I've seen people reduce the coloniz colonization range. Well, let's just leave it for now anyway. That you're just starting the game and you're just beginning. Uh, let's just go ahead and leave it like this. Um, you know what? Just to make it like really like pretty easy, let's go ahead and put it on human. And these guys are better spies, which is good. And they're gifted scientists, which is good. Faster research, 15%. I like that. Uh, let's go to your empire. Here we will name it the Let's Plays or the, uh, yeah, the Let's Plays. And I suggest as a color, <clears throat> as I suggest as a color, I suggest a bright color so it sets off against the bright background. Let's try green and let's go ahead and pick a kind of a, there we go, green, green, that looks good. Uh, galaxy, let's go ahead and set it on the rim. Oh, I, I guess I said I set it on, uh, I set it on a, a ring galaxy, didn't I? All right, well, let's put it on the rim. My home system is going to be normal. And normal conditions, normal quality, normal everything. Starting size is good. The tech level is pre-warp. Now this here, um, I believe this is going to set the quality and the situation for the other AI empires. In other words, most of them will be starting at pre-warp, although there may be some that start at level one, depending on how the computer decides they want to shake it out. Uh, corruption, if you don't want to mess with it, put it on low. And your government, you can see all the different pluses and minuses. Uh, let's go ahead and just take some kind of really nice thing like democracy. We get a 10% growth rate. We, we have even less corruption. We have high approval. Our research speed vastly augmented. Colony aug income vastly augmented. Maintenance cost is augmented also. It's going to be more expensive. Troop recruitment is cheaper, but war wariness plus 40%. So you definitely are not going to go to war while you're under a democracy. Or if you do go to war, you're going to want to make sure that it ends quickly before your people get too mad at you. Let's go ahead. This is going to give us like a huge amount of bonuses at the very beginning. I like that. All right. Uh, what did we say? We said that we would have a, a small empire. So let's go ahead and generate seven starting empires. And victory conditions, we are going to uncheck everything. 
just to make it like a sandbox. Uh, I have also unchecked all the storyline parts, the distant worlds, the original story events, the return of the Shakturi. Basically what I want, I'm just looking for a sandbox experience here. Although I have left checked enable disasters, I have left checked enable race specific events. Uh, I unchecked the shadow story events. I've also, I think this is better for new players is to uncheck allow tech trading. This puts everybody at kind of an even keel. And I've unchecked allow giant culters at game start because we don't want our new game to be ruined by some super powerful space creature that's just going to come along and destroy us. And we're ready to start the game. So in part two, we'll, we will start by playing the game and explaining some of the screens in the main uh, game uh, area. All right. And we'll see you for part two in just a little bit.